So I'm Michael Monti. I'm the CEO of Champlain Housing Trust. They basically asked me to MC this, uh, this afternoon. So I'm just basically going to do that right now. And I'm going to introduce Moreau Weinberg, the mayor of Burlington. <laughs> Good afternoon, folks. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thank you all for being here. It's really exciting to be up here with this, this big group. Um, <clears throat> uh, in a moment, we're going to hear from Juana Matias, who's the regional administrator, uh, administrator for HUD New England. Um, we also have Carrie Duquette Hoffman from the Vermont Agency of Human Services, Field Services Director, who uh, is a great partner in many areas. And I think we're going to let Michael come back to the microphone. and. Uh, and maybe, maybe your maybe your MC instructions say we're going to hear from more people as well. Thank you to our uh, federal delegation uh, for all being represented here too. Um, I want to at the start here recognize the city team members that have been working so hard um, on this project and on the issue of homelessness. Sarah Russell, who's our special assistant to end homelessness, is here. Uh, Samantha Dunn, our assistant director for community works, who's really our, our uh, our real estate person who really led the, the physical project of getting this uh, created. And we also, Marcella Ganje, who is, uh, where'd Marcella go? She's, uh, she, that's right, she's, she's, she's talking to neighbors back there and she's been at this for, for a long time. Uh, thank you also, Sarah Carpenter, the uh, ward um, four uh, city councilor and, um, I think uh, I know the, uh, many other counselors uh, wanted to be here too. They've been uh, very committed to this project. Um, <clears throat> today's event is an important demonstration of the unique moment uh, we're in. Uh, it's a moment in which the city is closely aligned with our state and federal uh, partners in prioritizing investment, systems change, and urgent action that is required to make good on the promise of housing as a human right. It, um, it really, uh, it's, you know, it was just, Juana and I were just talk, chatting, uh, getting ready here today. It is exciting to be so uh, aligned on the, the, this goal of reducing homelessness. Uh, AHS has been very hands-on in the creation of this. It really does feel like uh, one of those moments that is, having done this for a decade now, I think rare that we have such uh, strong partnerships at all level of government. Um, this site is a testament to that and to that shared commitment. When open, the Elmwood Emergency Shelter Community will provide emergency shelter and essential support services for up to 35 of our most vulnerable neighbors and will serve as a critical resource as we continue working through the challenges ahead. You know, I've always believed that our housing shortage and the dramatic increase in homelessness that we've seen in recent decades is a um, are, are really problems that are driven by long-standing policy decisions about land use, about mental health, and about how we create in our institutions. And, and these are uh, policies that we can fix. And throughout my time as mayor, uh, the city team has really been very focused on on doing the barriers to abundant and affordable housing in our city, and to making the system serve the chronically homeless. Uh, better. Uh, some just, you know, quick examples of that are changing the way we do permitting in the downtown to make it possible for all projects, affordable projects and market rate projects to get permits and get them quickly, eliminating uh, wasteful uh, parking requirements, um, creating a coordinated entry system so that all the organizations that are uh, working on ho homelessness have shared information. Despite those and many other efforts of the last decade, the collision of COVID-19 with um, the long-standing, you know, decades in the making, severe housing shortage has meant that this moment, in many ways, the problem is worse than ever. Hundreds of Burlingtonians are living in chronic homelessness, which is way up from before the pandemic. We have the lowest vacancy rate we had seen in, in decades. We, 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 for years, were very concerned about a low vacancy rate. It's dropped down to 0.5%. And we know that uh, way too many of our neighbors are suffering uh, and our businesses are suffering too. Our, our organizations, uh, they are struggling to, uh, to hire folks and keep folks because of the, the tightness of the, the housing challenge right now. So that's why uh, nearly a year ago now, I announced a new 10 point action plan to fulfill 
the promise of housing as a human right here in Burlington. And this action plan has two cornerstone goals, the doubling of housing production over the next five year period, starting a year ago, and ending chronic homelessness in Burlington by 2025. The HUD House America partnership that we're, we're here to talk about today is very, again, is very much aligned and really uh, on point with those priorities. Um, and we, we made sort of, with, within our kind of broader goals, we made some specific uh, commitments to HUD. And in February of this year, we made a commitment to House America to rehouse 66 homeless households and to build eight new homeless dedicated units within a year. And uh, I am pleased to share today that we have fulfilled that commitment. Between May and September of this year, 108 households were placed in permanent housing in Chittenden County through the coordinated entry system. Seven new homeless dedicated units have been created, which isn't quite eight, but we're expecting 20 more to come online uh, by February, the year milestone, through the Vermont Housing Improvement Program, which is a state program funded by ARPA and administered by the Champlain Housing Trust, which provides direct financial support for private landlords to improve existing rental properties if they accept the referrals through the local coordinated entry system. Looking a little further downfield, we know that at least 39 new homes dedicated to housing formerly homeless individuals are uh, in construction, um, are in the construction timeline right now and uh, slated to open by the end of 2025. Um, and that is a number for this period that we're focusing on, on pushing up even further as we go forward. Uh, finally, in terms of progress over the last year, we know that success is not just about building homes. We have also made major investments in improving and expanding our system for reducing chronic homelessness. We have made new investments in that coordinated entry system we created just a few years ago with, with the, the Chittenden County Continuum of Care. Uh, the city has dramatically expanded its community service liaison program, which are individuals with service backgrounds that are working for the police departments and, and are working directly with uh, chronically homeless individuals in this community. And uh, as I noted at the top, we have created and, and hired a great special assistant to end homelessness and, and Sarah Russell to ensure that we keep driving this progress forward. You know, in short, um, in the kind of first year of this effort, there are significant signs of momentum and we know we have a lot of work left to do. In order to deliver on the promise of housing as a human right to house everyone, we need to stay focused on this dual approach of building as many new homes uh, of all types as we can and continuing to strengthen and improve this, the system for serving uh, the homeless. This is exciting work. I'm proud of how far the city's come uh, in recent months. Um, but you know, again, we have a lot more to do and we're very gr grateful to have such strong local, state and federal partners to get this work done. And with that, I guess uh, I'll have Michael come back yeah. to introduce our next speaker. Thank you very much, Mayor. And I want to introduce the HUD Regional Administrator, uh, Housing and Urban Development is what HUD stands for, uh, Juanita Matias. Good afternoon, everyone. It's always a joy to come to Vermont. This is my second visit, and I really appreciate Mayor Weinberger. You always provide me a warm welcome. And anytime I'm here, I see our private, nonprofit, local, state, and federal partners coming together to really address a need. I want to thank Mike for the introduction. As we all know, housing is a critical pillar of our society. It's foundational to the health of our families, communities, and our economy. I want to thank my, uh, Mayor Weinberger and Brian Pine from the Office of Community and Economic Development for your leadership and for all you have done to prioritize ending homelessness in Burlington. And a special thank you to Sarah Russell and Marcella Ganji for all you do to support the homeless population in Burlington. And also I must, must, must acknowledge my incredible team here in Vermont. A special thanks to Sean Thomas, who is our HUD Vermont State Director and our program analyst Katie Blanchard 
for all you do to advance HUD's mission in the state and to provide services for the residents of Burlington. Look, at HUD, we are focused on housing and community development with a dedication to equity, inclusive communities, quality and affordable homes for all. Today, I am proud to be here with all of you to spotlight this House America collaborative effort. This partnership is a perfect example of what is possible when we leverage federal, state and local resources and private funding to address a crucial need in our community. That is what we set out to do when we began House America back in 2022, 21. We called on mayors, tribal leaders, county leaders, governors to address our nation's, ho nation's homelessness crisis with historic American Rescue Plan investments and other federal, state, and local resources. And Mayor Weinberger and Burlington answered that call. We are reaffirming today that commitment and celebrating the progress you have made here in rehousing homeless individuals and creating more affordable housing. Boosting the supply of a quality of housing is every, in every community is the top priority of President Biden, Secretary Fudge, and HUD. Construction and investment for affordable housing preservation through HUD's Rental Assistance Demonstration Program, or known as RAD, has surpassed $15 billion nationwide since the program's inception in 2013. Public housing authorities across the nation have leveraged this program to obtain this financing for the construction, rehabilitation, and preservation of affordable rental homes for low-income families, seniors, and persons with disabilities. And Burlington has stepped up to the challenge and surpassed their original goals by not only preserving their current stock of affordable units, but also developing new units and making sure we have a pipeline to meet the need. We know that housing is fundamental to ensuring thriving communities and economic prosperity. We must constantly continue to find ways to align the federal, state, and local government to induce policies that reduce housing costs so we can ensure more affordable rents, more attainable, equitable home ownership opportunities within our communities. At HUD, we look forward to continuing to work together with Burlington and its partners to continue to advance House America and create inclusive communities. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this partnership and I look forward to coming back. Thanks, Juana. I appreciate, I appreciate the drive up and uh, hopefully you come back every year yes. to see how we're doing. Um, I'm going to be able to now introduce uh, Carrie Duquette Hoffman, Field Services Director for the Vermont Agency of, of Human Services, who is a big partner in this project. Hello. I'd like to start by introducing my colleague, Dave Regal, who is the newly hired um, Housing Policy and Planning Director at the Agency of Human Services. It's important to mention his hire because I want to underscore how important housing is in Vermont and to, to the Secretary and to our agency. I'd like to thank the city of Burlington and the fabulous CETO team who have already been thanked quite a bit today um, for really uh, taking on a new project and trying something creative and ingenuitive. I'd also like to thank Mayor Weinberger, the Champlain Housing Trust, and the other agencies that stepped up to partner on this project, CVOEO's Cora, Cora team, the Turning Point Center of Chittenden County, uh, Community Health Center of Burlington, and Vermont criminal justice reform. It takes an active, active network of creative providers to work on housing in Vermont. And I'm so thankful, we're so thankful that this team has stepped up and is working on this project. Our communities are healthier and safer when every, every Vermonter has shelter. We appreciate the efforts each community has, admit, has made across the state to address homelessness. This is a challenge that takes many approaches and each approach is valued. This project meets a critical shelter need in Burlington and in Chittenden County as a whole. Um, we appreciate the city's rapid work. It's been so quick. <laughs> I know for those en enmeshed in it, it probably doesn't feel as quick, but it has been really quick work. Um, to learn from the successful efforts like this in Washington, Wisconsin, and Massachusetts. This is a critical component of the state's efforts to ensure that Vermonters have access to flexible options and services that address their diverse needs. Throughout, through the pandemic relief recovery funding, Vermont, um, Vermont's traditional, and sorry, and Vermont's traditional housing investments, the state has been able to preserve or create 2,000 units of affordable housing. 
This will happen by 2026, but we actually anticipate that it may happen even, even sooner than that. This will double the amount of existing units. Thank you so much for your work and efforts. Thank you very much. <clears throat> And uh, they, I want to recognize David Regal, who worked at CHT. We hired him at the end of March, right when the pandemic was starting. Dave was leaving. We ran after him and said, you know what? We have a job for you. <laughs> and we hired him on the spot. And he, uh, he led uh, CHT's work uh, throughout the last couple of years during the pandemic, opening up motels, closing down motels, opening up motels, shifting staffing, and did a great job. And so AHS. You owe us some money for this one. <laughs> I'm looking for the trade. Uh, so let me take a few moments uh, before I invite up representatives of the congressional delegation just to say a few words. First, I want to recognize the mayor and the mayor's team uh, for the work that they've done in, in just the creation of the Elmwood Avenue shelter community. Our part of the process has begun, and we intend to bring years of hopefully of management experience to the shelter, uh, giving the unhoused a chance to move from shelter into permanently affordable homes. That is our goal. Uh, this community will be managed by the same team as our 58 motel rooms in Shelburne, but we are in the process simply of hiring new staff. So if anybody is looking for work, they should contact CHC. We still have some positions open. Um, but people do need permanent housing. And at this time, we have 560 apartments in various stages of development um, in Burlington, Colchester, Williston, South Burlington, Shelburne, St. Albans, and uh, a pretty, pretty hefty pipeline to meet the needs of affordable housing overall. And over, over 180 of those apartments will be reserved for people who are homeless. Uh, next month, 38 will become available in Williston uh, at December, this, uh, opening December 1st and soon after another 20 in South Burlington. So we're doing the best we can to move people out of shelter into permanently affordable housing. And along with our natural turnover rate, apartments that become available because people are moving out and moving on in, within CHT, we intend to house over 300 homeless uh, households over the next few years. Uh, so we hope to do our part knowing that others in the city and in the state and in the county are doing that part as well. Let me say a few words about uh, VHIP, the Vermont Housing Improvement Program. It's an important part of the efforts to meet the goals of HUD's Housing America initiative. This program is making improvements to vacant and substandard housing and making those apartments available to homeless households for a period of time. At CHT, we have 60 apartments right now underway um, to, that are under contract or consideration. And for the state of Vermont, there are hundreds more. Uh, so that is a great program that is really lending the effort. So I, I, I've been told that I have five more minutes before the rain starts. So I want to go, let's see, I want to go in order. If I could have Tom Barry from Senator Leahy say, say a few words. Five minutes split three ways, okay. Um, <laughs> a minute and a half. And, and, and then, thank you, Regional Administrator Mateus, for another trip to Vermont. November is the best time, really, to visit. Um, <laughs> You know, on, on behalf of Senator Leahy, uh, uh, the senators worked with uh, Congressman Welch and Senator Sanders as well, and you know, as led by President Biden to provide in the last few years an unprecedented infusion of resources to help uh, states and local governments address intractable problems. And um, if there is a more intractable and difficult and complicated yet important and urgent problem than homelessness, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what that would be. And so, thank you and congratulations to. HUD and to the state and to the city and to all the nonprofit sector, everybody who has stepped up and made sure that this infusion of resources, which I won't say was the easy part, but really getting busy and putting these dollars to work on the ground this quickly is, is great. It's important. House America will follow through on that. Uh, uh, the delegation heard that some of the Treasury rules were um, not the best and went to work on, on fixing that. Others may have more to say about that, but there's a real opportunity now. Uh, it's playing out here. And, um, you know, just, just thank you to everybody involved with uh, making this a reality and, and helping to make sure that the resources that have been provided are going to be well used. Thank you, Chuck. And I'm now for Senator Leahy Erhard Manka. Erhard. Senator Sanders. Senator Sanders. What did I say? Senator Sanders. Senator Sanders. Again. <laughs> no problem, Michael. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, on behalf of, uh, again, my name is Erhard Monk. I'm with uh, Senator Sanders' office. Uh, just to 
Make sure we got that right. <laughs> uh, on behalf of Senator Sanders, uh, I want to thank, like others, uh, thank uh, Mayor Weinberger, uh, Champlain Housing Trust, uh, the Community Economic Development Office, really everyone who's been involved in uh, making possible the completion of these 30 much needed new shelters for our unhoused neighbors. Uh, in the winter of 1982, as Mayor of Burlington, Senator Sanders gathered a group of volunteers together to address the growing, then growing, homeless population in Burlington. Uh, which led to the creation of the Committee on Temporary Shelter. Tragically, 40 years later, almost 600,000 people are still living on the streets in our country on any given night. And over 2,000 people are living in emergency motels, shelters, and encampments here in Vermont. As Senator Sanders would say, that is simply unacceptable. Senator Sanders knows that decent, safe, and affordable housing is a basic human right and is essential for a person's ability to live with dignity and succeed in their lives, period. Today, too many Americans, including far too many Vermonters, do not have a safe and affordable place to call home. Senator Sanders has long understood the value of HUD and other federal resources in creating more affordable housing, opportunity, community, and equity for all. As chair of the Senate Budget Committee, he fought hard to make sure that Vermont and its cities and towns got their fair share of American Rescue Plan funds and is pleased to see this invaluable federal resource being put to good use providing shelter and services for some of the most vulnerable among us. He looks forward to the success of the goals of the Elmwood Emergency Shelter to provide re residents with refuge from the elements, their own four walls, electricity, heat and air conditioning, access to services and sanitary facilities, and a path to permanent affordable housing. Uh, thanks again to HUD for initiating House America, to the mayor and city for joining this important initiative, and congratulations again to everyone involved in making this much needed project a reality. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Tiffy and Dean, Congressman Welch still. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Tafine Dean and I'm an outreach representative for Congressman Welch's office and I work on housing policy. Congressman Welch sent his regrets that he couldn't be here with you all today. As some of you may know, Peter began his career as a Kennedy Fellow working on racial discrimination in housing in Chicago. He and his colleagues worked with black residents who were denied mortgages because of their race. In Congress, Peter has continued to advocate on housing uh, provisions and needs and resources. He was a strong advocate for the funding and resources in the American Rescue Plan that fund, helped fund this project. As Peter always says, his job in Congress is to ensure that Vermont gets all the resources and funding that projects like this needs. But the hard work is done at the community. And so he sends his gratitude to everyone at the city of Burlington, Mayor Weinberger, um, uh, Administrator Mateus, thank you for visiting. And he looks forward to visiting the site and um, seeing all the residents of this beautiful place. Um, these homes will provide stability and safety for the most for the most in need of their most vulnerable. So Peter is very grateful for all the efforts. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take any questions. Anybody from the press have any questions? We'd be glad to. <clears throat> Has the contract been officially signed between Champlain Housing Trust and the city for the project? I think so, yeah. Um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and then with the staffing levels, um, if you were not able to hire as many, can you still open? Is there any we're potential of delaying? Let's just say we're optimistic that we're going to have the staffing we need. You know, and, and uh, we, have a, we have a certain capacity within CHT to move folks around. We hope we don't have to do that, but we, we, we believe we're going to be able to get there. Administrator, how unique is this housing pod concept for meeting homelessness needs, uh, especially under the Housing America provisions? Yeah, in Region 1, this is the first pod. The mic. Thank you for the question. Um, in Region 1, the six New England states, which I oversee, this is the first pod model that I've seen. I think you've seen a lot of repurposing hotels to meet the need, uh, but it is great to see how the mayor is partnering with HUD on our House America plan to meet the need in a very timely manner, right, in light of the elements and the changing weather that will be occurring here in Vermont. Um, and I think I agree with what Mike said. It's about getting 
homeless individuals and families into permanent housing. But in the meantime, how are we providing them the resources and the shelter that they need to be safe um, and well? So. Now that you've seen this, what yeah. potential do you think this could mean? Yeah, no, when we come out to sites like this, these are models that could be scaled. You know, when I visit communities and I get to see the, the work that's happening on the ground, it's we don't have to recreate the wheel, it's best practices. So I look forward to sharing this, uh, this innovation that's happening, this collaboration that's happening here uh, with these pods. And hopefully we can see other communities and cities um, take this on. I was just sharing with Mayor Weinberger as I was coming in, he's like, oh, but all communities are doing this. And I'm like, no, they're not. You should be proud. I've been to communities where they're saying the homeless population isn't our concern. They're not from our city. They should not be here. And so I commend uh, Burlington and Mayor Weinberg and all of our federal and state partners for saying they're voters, they're our neighbors, they could be our friend, and what are we doing to meet the need? And so this is a great example, and I look forward to highlighting this um, with our HQ partners and also partners across Region 1. Thank you. In. No, I look forward to. I'm like, when are we going to wrap up <laughs> questions? Because I want to peek in and get to see what it looks like inside. And we know, right, this is temporary. The goal should be permanent. And I loved hearing from Mike and Mayor Weinberger about wraparound services. We know that our um, homeless individuals are facing mental health, substance abuse, behavioral needs. And so making sure we have a one-stop shop here to meet those needs and get people into permanent housing is the ultimate goal and one that the Biden and Harris administration um, firmly stands by. Thank you. Anybody else? Excellent. We did it before the rain came. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.